layer. Feel free to take it off if you want to. If you're going to sing, I would suggest too, if you want to sing along, keep your mask on. It's just, again, I want to protect the younger unvaccinated ones, and right now, um, with numbers on the rise, the Delta, uh, uh, Delta version of this virus is so prevalent and so contagious, I really, um, just to be respectful, I think most people have masks on, so uh, that's good. We will have masks here, too, if you want to grab one when you come in. Um, Bible studies, oh, we're still doing our Tuesday evening Bible study on Zoom at 6.30. We are getting ready, we just finished 1 Kings, we're getting ready to go into 2 Kings. Um, if you want the Zoom link, just let me know and I can get you the Zoom link. Deb is doing her Bible study at noon on Tuesdays now with lunch. Um, and that's going well, so I feel free to join for that. We have two concerts coming up. James is on the 28th with his trio. And Rudy and his partner will be here on September 4th. Uh, that one will be inside, right? Yeah. Uh, and then on the 18th, September 18th, we have the block party coming up. So um, be looking for that, uh, information on that too. We still need lots of volunteers, so if you can be here and volunteer for that, we definitely need volunteers for that. And then we also need donations. I'd like our congregation to at least donate $500 towards um, the food for the, some of the food for the block party. Uh, so if just put it in an envelope, mark it um, block party or whatever, or write in a memo line for a check block party, but we will be taking donations for that. And then on September 12th, is God's hands, our work, um, or God's work, our hands. <laughs> and um, the Resurrection Lutheran, one of our partners who does breakfast on the second Sundays, will be coming and joining us that morning for worship. They'll do the breakfast and then join us for worship that morning. And then afterwards, we'll be doing some projects around here, like painting our pink doors. Maybe we can paint them right again. <laughs> and, doing some things like that around here. So I invite you, if you're able, to just stay. We'll hopefully have some lunch and join them in some fellowship and just doing some projects around the church. So we're going to have a busy August and September. Um, a lot's going on. And then the uh, Latin Festival, Rudy. You can maybe stand up and say something about that. Um, so yeah, any other announcements before we get started this morning? When is the Latin Festival, Rudy? The first September. 21st and 22nd of August. So, yeah, coming up, we're going to have some, some busy August. I think there's something going on with us every weekend in August and into September. So, um, mark your calendars. It's a great chance to get involved. Any other thing? Would the McKees like to stand up and introduce yourselves again? They have decided to join the church, so please introduce yourselves. And, uh,
social distance in the sanctuary. If you want, you can bring your mask. And hopefully we can have a great time. Okay, what, what I'm going to play, this is a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. He was very much in the church. He worked all his life writing music for church. This is a piece that he wrote for choir, orchestra, and singers. It's, it's called Cantata. And the name of the piece is called Sleepers Away.
And all God's people said, Amen. Let us take a minute and confess our sins before our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, when it comes to our lives, we want the easy way out. When things go wrong, we want to find who to blame for our misfortune. When we don't get what we want, we want to punish whoever prevents us from our goals and our desires. We don't want to look at the ways in which we have perverted your love for us. We treat you as though you are a puppet who will dance at our demands. We act like spoiled children who want everything immediately and who become sullen and spiteful if we don't get what we ask for. We stop listening to you. Systems of greed and injustice replaced your command to love one another. And now we come to you, asking for forgiveness and healing. Help us to see that our hearts and our lives are empty without your love. Help us to understand that our spirits wither and die in this greedy wasteland without you. Help us to realize that what we need is your life-sustaining bread. Bread that heals our souls. Help us to turn to you, to truly worship you, and to willingly work for healing and hope in this world. We ask these things in the name of your Son, and all God's people say, Amen. People of God, our Savior has heard our cries and knows our anguish and knows the fear that lays at the heart of our sin. In Jesus Christ, you are loved and forgiven. Praise be to God who forgives us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Who's on your shirt? Is Hulk on your shirt? Yeah. And do you like to pretend to be Hulk sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. And who do you guys like to pretend to be sometimes? Princesses. You like to pretend to be animals. That is true. <laughs> Like to, to imitate an animal for us? No. Anyone you want. Pretend to be. Pretend to be an animal. Can you be a monkey? Can you be a
from 1 Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there was in his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Please stand for a reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by my Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from, from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Our reading in Kings today jumps right into meeting Elijah with no introduction at all. So let me give some context that today's reading doesn't give. He comes onto the scene just two chapters earlier for the first time in Kings and tells the king that a drought is coming and then he runs away. We see him next with a widow and her son who aren't Israelites and they are starving. They don't have enough flour or, or oil even for that day's bread. But Elijah assures her that if she just feeds him first, then the Lord of Israel won't let her jars go empty. She does what she's told, and immediately after they eat, her son dies. And Elijah has to lay on him three times, and then he's resurrected. All this leads the woman to believe in Elijah's God. A few days later, Elijah forms a public miracle, challenging 450 priests of Baal to a battle of miracles. When the other priests run around shouting and dancing all day long and can't call down fire from heaven, it's Elijah's turn. In a drought, he pours 12 jugs of water all over his altar, all over the sacrifice, all over the fire, so uh, wood. And then he prays, and he calls on God, who immediately rains down fire from heaven. And then, in the next verse or two, the drought ends. Proving the God of Israel is greater than Baal just upsets the king and his wife Jezebel, because they worship Baal. And so she threatens Elijah, and he has to flee again. So why do I give you two chapters worth of background on Elijah? It's because today's reading requires understanding Elijah's state of mind. While some of us might think that watching God or being part of God's miracles for two days or a week might sound exhilarating, I actually think it sounds draining. We know that 
even Jesus needed rest after miracles and alone time after crowds and threats. And I'm guessing Elijah was no different. He saw big things happen from God, and I think he's exhausted. I also think he's lonely. We read in these texts that the other prophets have been killed, and now Elijah is also being hunted. He's proven that God is above all other gods, and yet the people and even the king aren't interested in the message. Doing God's work has drained him, and he's so spent that he says, that's enough. Now, Lord, take away my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors. He thinks he's no better than his ancestors who have wandered from God and, and been involved in idolatry. But he's the one that just fed a widow's family in a time of drought, resurrected her son, reversed a drought for the kingdom, called down fire from heaven, and that was just a week. He's the great prophet. He's the one that they'll compare Jesus to. But in his exhaustion and loneliness, he's ready to give up. Do you think we can relate to Elijah? I think a lot of us are exhausted. I think the pandemic has been exhausting. I think political arguments are exhausting. I think watching injustice for years is exhausting. And I think losing loved ones and watching health battles is exhausting. Just in this congregation, in this community, in the last year, or maybe two, we've suffered so much illness, so much death. Yes. We've watched so much injustice, and we've seen so much need. I think we're worn down, and at least some of it feels like spiritual exhaustion. Amen. Elijah needed rest and a meal. The angel's ministry to him is to bring him food and water twice and encourage him that he can keep going. In fact, the angel's food is so restorative that he goes on a 40-day journey up a mountain to meet God. And if we read just one or two paragraphs after today's reading, we would see Elijah allowed to stand on the mountain and watch the wind and the earthquake and the fire and then meet God in total silence. He needed rest and bread to restore his physical body, but he needed the connection to God to restore his spiritual body. With his body and spirit restored, he's able to go back to work. And like Elijah, when we're worn down, sometimes we want to give up. But God calls us to never be content in watching injustice and need around us. Like Elijah, sometimes we need to pause to be restored. We need healthful nourishment, and most of all, we need to renew our connection to God so that we can get back to the work God's called us to. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus said he's the bread of life, that no one will go hungry if they come to him. Last week, Pastor Sally talked about how the people were only following Jesus because he fed the 5,000. If you haven't noticed, this is our third week talking about bread. The people just wanted Jesus to keep feeding them, keep doing miracles that provided food, keep solving their physical needs while they ignore their spiritual hunger. Today's reading is the continuation of last week's reading. Jesus reminds the hungry crowd that the manna given to the Israelites as they wandered the desert was a temporary fix. The people who ate the manna still died eventually. He calls them to want more than a temporary fix, to want more from God, to want Him. Manna sent by God was just enough for a daily life, but Jesus sent by God is enough for eternal life. Amen. Grain itself was a valuable commodity used for trading, but they didn't buy bread in a store like we do. We're kind of spoiled. We don't have to go through all the effort. Bread was made in the home daily. It was nourishing and sustaining and filling. And if you accepted it, it nourished you. Jesus knows. They understand the importance of bread. And so he uses the, I am the bread of life, or some versions say, I am the bread of heaven, or I am the bread of God, to underscore that their spiritual lives are even more valuable, more sustaining. But it requires accepting the bread so that he can nourish you. I have a friend who teaches in Thailand. And this week he was also reflecting on these verses, and he shared, what if Jesus had been in Asia instead of the ancient Near East? Would he have said, I am the rock?
price of life? Because the bread isn't the point. The bread is the sustaining thing that we're supposed to understand. Jesus is the one who sustains us for eternity. Yes. Do we take the time to lean on him for our sustaining? Do we take the time to maintain our connection so that we can get through every day and on to eternal life? Like Elijah experienced and like Jesus is trying to tell us, our physical bodies and our spiritual health are connected. I think Pastor Sally even said that last week too. In each of the stories, the people are fed physically and then spiritually. I read passages like this and I think of the hungry in our world. This week alone, I've seen people living in tents at the Main Street exit of the highway. I've seen people in tents living in our alleys. I've seen men sleeping on benches alone in the heat of the day. And I know families who are thrilled that school is starting so that it means consistent breakfast and lunch in their bellies. I've spoken at a lot of churches in 20 years of doing urban ministry, and when I speak up about the poor, I get the strangest responses. One pastor at a wealthy suburban church got up, and after I spoke about the poor and God lifting up the poor, he stood up after me and said, praise God, we're all poor, and we can all be lifted up. And I'm looking around saying, you missed the whole point. A more common question I get from leaders is asking whether our ministry wants volunteers for helping people or for sharing the gospel, as if those are two separate things. Elijah didn't experience them separately. He was exhausted and scared and running when the angel fed him and encouraged him to continue on in his work for God. The widow didn't experience them separately. It wasn't until her flour jar and her jug of oil were full and her son was uh, resurrected that she recognized Elijah's God as the true God. Jesus also didn't talk about them separately. He fed the people and then told them to not just get physically full, but to hunger more deeply and to look for spiritually sustaining belief in him. Yeah. Last week, Pastor said, Jesus didn't come to save the world with miraculous band-aids, but to change the world's perspective on God. Yeah. So the question is, what is our perspective on God? Some of us might say we see him as creator or survivor or provider. But if we're honest, I think a lot of us see God as the big sky God who set things in motion and then stood back to watch in amusement. Or maybe we see him as the micromanager who decides, who helps us decide whether to give up cars or sweets and then spends all his time tallying our good and bad deeds to decide our eternal fate. But Elijah and Jesus see God differently. He's the God who provides physical bread to those in need to fill the bellies of the exhausted. But he's also the God who provides for spiritual selves, angels to encourage the poor in spirit, yeah. and a Savior who walks with us if we'll just believe. Will we let today's stories of Jesus and Elijah change our perspective? Did you hear the song, Thirsting in Our Soul? I think we ignore the thirsting in our soul. I think we're happy settling for just the nourishment of our physical body while we watch injustice and need around us. Can we want more? Can we want spiritual health too? I pray that we let ourselves be people who trust God for daily bread, both physical and spiritual, so that we can get back to work together. Amen. Amen.
want to start our prayer time this morning with Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Yes. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Oh, Holy Father, we come before you this morning with humble thanks for the day. Yes. For thanks for the air in our lungs and the energy just to get here today. So many, dear Lord, are not able to even make it to church. We pray for those like Mary yes. and Marilyn yes. and Peggy yes. and Sonia. Yes. We pray for Retta's daughter. Yes. Dear Lord, we pray for Michael as he continues to struggle with the tumor. We pray for safe travel for the Rileys. Yes as they enjoy family camp this week. Dear Lord, our nation is being overtaken again by COVID. Yes. So we pray for those affected. affected. Give them, those unvaccinated, the wisdom and the will to go and get vaccinated, dear Lord. Yes. We pray for the safety of our health care workers again, dear Lord. Dear Lord, our nation is so divided right now. And this is what we're seeing with the COVID crisis. So we just ask that you bring unity. Yes. Lift up leaders that can bring us together, dear Lord. And help us to listen and see our brother and our sister. And to seek understanding in all things. Yes. Dear Lord, give us as a church the wisdom to lead. Yes. The world is in need of your word and your bread right now. And dear Lord, please give rest to your prophets and to those that are doing your work in this world. For it is hard right now, dear Lord. Yes. And now I invite those who would like to add their own prayers, either silently or loud as the Spirit leads, to offer their own prayers, knowing that God will hear and that God is present and is listening.
worried and um, lots of different opinions about how it should look for kids to be in school together. So I just ask that um, if everyone has spirits of
thy blood shed for you and for all people yes. for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the night is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, wherever and ever. Amen. We believe this meal is a gift from God. And as a gift, all you need to do is to receive it, to take the bread and let it sustain you spiritually, as well as feed you spiritually. So I invite everybody who'd like to come forward, come forward. Please wear your mask and maybe take the bread and the wine back to your table. The wafer is on top, the grape juice is underneath. But come, the meal is ready. Now will God take away the sins of the world? Have mercy on us. Now will God take away the sins of the world? Have mercy on us.